Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Pillars of Eternity, Deadfire. With the number two in between. I'm Girl RPG and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today here in the Undercroft as we kill a bunch of cutthroats. Not all of them though, uh, because I don't think there's a downside to doing this. Hold it right there, mate. Maybe there is. The pirate stares you down, hand clutching the hilt of his sword. His arm is roped with muscle and striated with pale scars. I know what that word is. Port's close to insiders. So I'll be seeing you off now into Andra's embrace. Hmm. <clears throat> with an audible crack of his neck, he lunges for you. Cut last swiping. No, he's just gonna die. He doesn't even have a skull above his head. Not inside his head, above his head. Yeah, it's gonna be easy. You're alone, mate. And there we go. We didn't fail any quests, which is fantastic. Although we might have locked ourselves out, uh, out of uh, of uh, other quests that we might get. But that is not my idea to get the quests that are in relation to these guys anyway. Uh, because from what we... Jesus. Uh, from what we found out last episode... Oh, these are still... I can be quiet if you can. Interesting. Uh, I like those fruit. Um, so yeah, from what we found out last episode, this is uh, related. Why are you like that? What's going on? Yeah. There? The game has been patched recently, as, uh, as you probably have guessed. <laughs> and there's some changes that happened. Uh, I do think that icon right there was him being flanked, because he lost the icon as soon as he lost the flanked thing, so yeah. Um, but yeah, we need to go to uh, back to. Uh, oh, I found something somewhere. Where is it? Over there. It's always so far, <laughs> so far away. Uh, we need to go back to that island that we've been to, the island where we killed pretty much everyone. Uh, unfortunately uh, for uh, them, but uh, mostly because they just attacked me. It was not really my intention. Uh, but oh, this goes up to Delve's roll. That was actually my expectation that I didn't have to go back over there and then do all the things. Uh, but yeah, so uh, when we go to that island and we meet with the pirate queen or whatever her name was, or not name, but I guess position was, uh, that sent us a letter, got, got in contact with us because we killed her lackey, and you can guess just how trusting uh, or how trustworthy that makes it seem that she contacted us to go there because we killed her lackey, but still. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I, I, I probably will just... Well, she will... Oh, boy. She will probably meet the same fate as her dead lackeys. Okay, this is interesting. All of these guys were friendly and now they're not. I am okay with that. Okay, let's go ahead and paralyze them all first. That's not going quite as well. There it is. Now they're paralyzed. I will just stay over here because I want to do this. The deer is taking a little bit of damage. I can do that. And that is Penumbra finishing. Don't say it, Colonel. Probably need her out of there, though. She's kind of up there. Mm-hmm. And I'm still counting on respecting all of these guys, but I will probably be doing it off camera because respecing a whole team, well, actually, respecting six people takes a, a lot of time. It's five people this time around, but still, absolutely, it's uh, it it can it can be it can take a little while. Where are we right now? Delver's Row. Have we actually been here? I like that the game. I like that these uh, that those guys weren't immediately aggressive. That means there might be like these guys, Ernesto. I think they're gonna be aggressive. I don't know why, but I think they will be. You're I'm gonna... looking for something, eh, Mika? Perhaps I have it. Oh, I was ready to reload because I wanted to make sure that they are indeed aggressive. Um, but apparently, I don't think we are going to need to reload. Ernezzo is a, a, a fair person. Ernezzo has not seen you before. You must be new. New or very good at disguises. He ch <laughs> yeah, he chuckles. He peers at you through half-moon spect spectacles. His face is hidden behind a thick but well-groomed beard, and his eyes constantly dart between you and the doorway. That's not half-moon... But more importantly, I think Half Moon's spectacles are just for reading, and why is he peering at me with the, through his reading spectacles? Wait, but I am mistaken. You have made a few enemies in this place already, no? Most bold of you to linger now. It's fine though, isn't it? He turns to Takeo. Ah, another young water mage. Come, see Ernezzo's wares. 
You must spend that extra coin on something. I... forgive me. Do we know each other? I could see. It seems not. The mistake is mine. His green recedes into his beard. He turns back to you. But how did you hear about this place? Wait, no. Do not tell me. Sometimes it is better not to know. There is something I can get for you, yes? Tell me quietly. I need supplies. Of course. Only do not tell anyone where you got them. I don't think that's a possibility in the game. <laughs> uh, discount on items plus 20% and it's red. I think that's not a discount. <laughs> Uh, we do have a Gatari Kuras over here that is extremely expensive, really, really expensive. Hiccup. I do wonder if um, the rest of the stuff kind of doesn't matter too much. I wonder if my sell item oh, or sell prices are affected by that. We have uh, an exceptional Archibus that is uh, unique. It's actually a fairly decent price for what it is, or for what it might be. It's exceptional right off the bat, which is pretty nice. Minus 5 range accuracy with Archibus attacks. That's just because it is inaccurate. Can I enchant it to be... Well, it gains the accuracy just because of the rest of the stuff. Why? What is that? Oh, be I need to spend... Oh, I need to spend money to enchant. That might be a reason why I lost money without noticing. Or forgetting about it. Um... Double tap, really? Hmm, no, it's a different thing. <laughs> Destroy lower level vessel on second consecutive hit. It should tell me what vessel that is. Um, because that is... Yeah, that's a, nice, that's a nice weapon right there. Unfit for melee, yeah, but that's just normal. Vill piercing, that's normal. Uh, the, the exceptional double barrel fires two shots before reloading, but has a reduced damage. Actually, that is pretty amazing. This is uh, a reduced... Not damage, a reduced range. This is pretty great. Now, I need to see if anybody u actually uses an Archivus, because I don't think anybody does. Uh, but that is a... No, nobody does. I could, for sure, but... Uh, there is something I can get for you? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I'm not gonna get it. Let's move on. I don't want to go back in there, because people will get upset. I think these people will get upset. I probably should be careful about that. Uh, street Merchant... Ooh. Oh! I honestly thought I was at a um, that area that we were in before before we going for, before going downstairs. Now who does easily done? She does stealing. I think that I she's am. gonna get spotted. Oh, she's amazing at this. Let's get you out of sneaking. Uh, nothing important. Dead eyes, nice, I suppose. That up there. Let's get her on this side. Really nice line that's going on on the soundtrack right now. Thank you very much, Still Justin. Oh, no. Okay. One of my most memorable soundtracks, even though, uh, instrumentally speaking, it's not really Still that is a bond. my favorite. Uh, is the one from Gothic t uh, 3, not Gothic 2, Gothic 3, and uh, it's one of my favorite soundtracks in any, any game. Oh no. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get that. I was trying to get that. I think I would, but these guys are just going all around all over the place. Uh, in any game, that reminds me of that, and that little line right there that we heard of the trumpets, I think those were? They might have been other things. I don't know the names of in English of the instruments, um, but that line kind of reminded me of, of... I have nothing for the likes of you. Okay, well, I thought... Oh, man. <laughs> Furtive whispers and footsteps rise from the lower street, and we found the way into that room, most likely. Indeed. Is there any reason to be in this room? Well, there is definitely something in here. Three garnets. It's rubies. The reflexes in shock. Lock difficulty 8. No. Total mechanics 12. Lock difficulty 12. Lock pick cost 1. Should do the job. That's why he tells me that. Nicely. Okay, and that is <laughs> the. I love it. I love it. That is the red hand. I am so glad I didn't buy it. Drowner's lung medicine. What? That's a quest item. The bottle holds an appealing brown sludge, but it's a cure for the deadly disease known as Drowner's lung. A sharp piney odor leaks uh, leaks past the cork. It's probably probably just pneumonia or something like that. 
I guess it sounds like, or no, actually, there's a name for that. It's when your uh, lungs are filled with liquid, liquid, uh, but it's just sort of uh, self-made liquid from the lungs. That has a name for that, but it's, it might be a condition rather than a, than a disease. Uh, so it might be caused by a disease rather than, you know, being a disease in and of itself. Um, fine leather, and it doesn't matter, so it's just everything is good. Okay, good. Give Let's... Though, actually, now that I'm here, I might as well just oh, open not. that. I am good. Well, that will do nicely. And nobody minds. As long as nobody sees me opening the door, I don't think anybody will, will mind me going through it. But even then, I didn't go through, because I didn't want to risk anything. Okay, so. Oh. I'm so sorry, I didn't see this. Move on, fast. And we did gain 200 experience there from opening that lock. Fantastic. Excuse me. Uh, will you allow me uh, some stealing time, please? <clears throat> Dim in the lantern. Okay, that's not go too bad. On, Captain. Let it go into fa uh, into yellow. Nobody's coming in here, so this guy's gonna get robbed. That's pretty fast, though. A rapier in a fine scale armor. What? No need to ask twice. What it was that? Huh. Slippery as an eel. I think it's her that's better at sneaking. Like she was not detected before when I was going through there. I wanna go over there now, but Okay. Oh, I wasted it. Ooh. What's that? Fine morning star. Is it red because they know I'm here? Hmm? Okay, you guys are in the way. Let's go. Yeah, you stay there. Uh, out of sneak. Let's get that. Yeah, that is. So you can go out of sneak. Really? Oh, come on, guys. I think I did a bad thing by having to... Uh... Well, that is weird. So that line of sight works? Even though... Hmm. Because he doesn't, doesn't have any color over here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Hmm. Yeah, I can't get there. Uh, I could... If I had her use the sneak items that I might have around, but I don't have it around because, yeah, that's fine. Hello, Imani. Not gonna sell. Ooh, this grizzled old Haumawa woman looks like she's been left in the sun to dry. Her skin is so worn and weathered, it's hard to tell her wrinkles from her scars. Be welcome, stranger. I've heard your name whispered in the streets of the black market. You need a blade or a bludgeon or some sturdy armor. Umani has what you seek. Umani. I am sorry, I called you Imoani. I think the voice actress here kind of <laughs> couldn't pronounce the, the name. Anyway, Old show me what Umani's you got. Umani's stock is tested in the hands and throats of the fiercest sorts in the gullet. But you already know that, Akira. Yeah, I, 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 it's not. The, it wouldn't be the first time. We still don't get very good discounts in here. It wouldn't be the first time we uh, we see voice actors, <clears throat> excuse me, mispronounce things. Grants immortal wield wearers immune to interrupt while they carry one or more injuries. That is nice, but it's. I mean, who get? Hmm. That's nice. That is nice. But it's it's dangerous to use because it would be good on a dare, but a dare comes back from the dead. So uh, if he dies once, he gets two injuries, and then he is also very close to death because when he gets resurrected, so he might die twice very uh, very close together, uh, which is a terrible idea to do. So yeah, I'm not gonna sell anything because I am sort of I doubt that uh, those discounts are only gonna apply to buy prices. Uh, in, in Baldur's Gate, it only applies to buy prices rather than uh, to sell prices as well, but th th it's not Baldur's Gate, it's Pills of Eternity. Even though it was made, or the first one anyway, was made to be the spiritual successor of Baldur's Gate. At least marketed as such. It's, you know, to, made to be is a... Ishi. Quiet time. Maybe it's a little bit of an overstretch. Okay, those people are not going to spawn us. We're going to be able to steal everything here. Fruit, I'll take that. Can't take that. Let's get back outside. Just say the word. There we go. Not very good stuff. I also don't understand why I couldn't do the, the take all. I don't know what that is. Might be a bug. Probably is. 
Like, look at that. Huh. It might be because I'm detected and it triggers something. It might also be the red... You saw the red... Um, the red... Uh, uh, sort of envelope of the items. Uh, I don't think that was in the game before. I don't remember seeing that. Uh, and that might be what's causing the bug, the introduction of that. So, Anorat, an Orlan woman, stands over a table laden with herbs and spices. She mixes them without looking at her work, pausing now and then to raise a sprig of fi or file to her nose. You realize she's blind. Yours is a gate I recognize, watcher. Best watch your step. It's the smell of cardamom that drew you, no? Or perhaps the sting of fresh pepper. Or maybe you seek something with a stronger bite. She swivels her head, uh, her ears, but her cloudy eyes do not find you. Uh, what do you sell? Food, of course, and supplies for the road. Though, most here come to me for poisons and venoms. Aww. I thought, I thought, um... That first line... Uh, it, it was pre it's pretty obvious that the voice actress is making a voice here. Uh, well, it's, it's forcing that voice. I thought it was her voice, just no, no normal voice. I guess it's normal for voice actors to, you know, make something out of her voice rather than just talk normally. But uh, that's that's a very awesome voice. I like it a lot. But uh, the, the, the I'm sort of disappointed to see that it's uh, it's not the normal voice of the voice actress. Anyway, I need supplies. I have plenty. Though, if you're buying poison and ailment... Mind you store them separate. Yes, that is a good advice. She still gives me a discount of plus 20%. That's a terrible discount. It's the worst discount I've ever seen. Actually, it might be wrong on that. Thieves Putty. Plus two mechanics, plus two side of hand, and plus two stealth. It lasts for a bunch of time. It's actually pretty expensive. 690 uh, per. So I don't want that. Uh, at all, so yeah, you can keep that. But still, it's good to know that that exists, that it's a thing, and that goes to. It doesn't tell me. Why? Maybe because I haven't been there yet. I doubt it. But again, I, d I say I doubt it because. Ooh, a figure in the shadow looks up at your work, uh, at your approach, bursting his lips together in a crooked line. I, I said uh, uh, I doubt it because if I hadn't been here, then why did it show the the little icon anyway, but I think this might be the reason. Think you made a wrong turn, Bilger. You don't belong in the row. <laughs> Nonsense. I go where I please. Oh, boy. I love that. This is just the uh, standard I go where I please line, but starting it with nonsense is just more... It's so dismissive of his of his whole act that it's, it's really cool, but I'm not gonna go with that. Um, actually, the smell of this shithole reminds me of home. Let's go with that. He raises an eyebrow at this. Long moments pass as he casually looks you up and down. I... For me, moments is like a minute. Especially if it's long. Yeah. And that's plural. He's not looking me up and down for... For a... Uh, let's... Yes, he is looking me up and down for a couple of minutes. I'm gonna wink at him. Either you don't know who I am, or you've had a few too many, eh? Don't matter. You sure as shit ain't the law. You sure as shit ain't either. He glances around the alley before continuing. You looking to commission an artist? You'll find none better in Nekataka, Bilger. He lightly, he lightly traces a finger across the hilt of an emerald encrusted stiletto hidden within the folds of a dark leather tunic. His narrowed eyes seem to dance in the magical light as the gemstone pulses with a ca caustic glow. The right half of his mouth sends menacingly as he dips his head and peers at you from underneath his brow. Oh. <laughs> I thought um, I thought I didn't quite get what art he was referring to. You know, you know, commission an artist. I guess I know what color he paints in. Uh you're an assassin? You're answered with a thin lipped scowl as your words echo throughout the alley. So would you be interested in joining my crew? Sorry, Bilger. I work alone. What sort of payment do you require for your services? I don't really have need of them, but still. Depends on the craftsmanship required. We don't know each other, so let's keep our dealings within the gullet, yeah? With a furrowed brow, he glares at you but says nothing. Uh, can I ask you to handle a problem for me? 
head swiveling side by side, he darts a cautionary glance, then, shoulders straightening, he leans close to you. Go on. You smell the hint of ale on his breath as he nearly hisses the words. Um... Actually, I don't need anyone murdered at the moment. <laughs> With a shrug, he leans back against the wall. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It's I'm okay. I, I, I'm all I'm all I'm all good for murders today. I'm good. I mean, we have been doing a lot of them ourselves, and that's the thing that. Actually, now that I think about it, if we need to kill someone, and uh, we're gonna get in trouble for it, I guess I know who can get in trouble instead. You leave the hustle of Delver's row behind you and fade into the alleys. Actually, speaking of it, of it, we needed to come down here anyway. This is the Delver's row, not the area above, uh, or the area where we were at when you descended. When we descended through the uh, elevator, uh, Takeo was talking about it. I think somebody t talked about it anyway. But yeah, you peer through the curtain at the tunnel beyond. It continues to the left and right. Uh, let's go left. A tunnel opals, opens to your right, rats squeak and skitter away at your approach, the way before you corkscrews into darkness. Let's continue. You make your way forward, filling the walls to guide yourself into darkness. Your Oh, could I have light, lit a torch? Because I think I, I didn't read it, sorry. Your hands come away slimy. You smell something foul further down the tunnel, the stench of loosened bowels and metallic tang of blood. At the end of the tunnel, you find a body slumped against the wall. Stab wounds rend the corpse's clothes and flesh, and uh, its arms and knees twist at unnatural angles. Uh, let's search the body. And that's gonna be you. Watcher only check, did you see that? I am curious. I mean, my perception is amazing, but I'm curious why that is. You find a secret compartment soon into the lining of his trousers. It contains a small note and a handful of coins. Okay, that's fine. Let's read the note. Ulog, it says. There is a new shipment for you, Roparo friend, uh, for your Roparo, Roparo, Roparo friends waiting near the lift in Delver's Row. Come get the food before the cave stink rots it. Your mad captain, Morena. Give the old man my regards. I put an extra koiki in there just for him. Don't say I never done anything nice. Huh. I think we need to meet Morena anyway. I think that she's the... We have... I heard of her. We need to go to uh, one of the bars somewhere upstairs. I don't remember. You have gained an item. Dead man's note. Uh, the item was put into your stash. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's turn around. And uh, then we had a, a tunnel that goes left. Yes, rats and stuff and stuff there. Let's take a left turn over here. What? Go left. And go right. The stone floor is littered with fish bones and bread crusts and stamped with footprints in all shapes and sizes. Voices echo down the passage ahead of you. Uh, let's go forward. The passage... Oh, awesome. The passage opens into a large cavern. Below you, ramshackle buildings crowd together a little uh, like broken teeth. A maze of streets wind between them, some barely wide enough for two to pass abreast. And yet, throngs of people fill the narrow streets and tiny plazas, their voices rising with the smoke of hundreds of torches. Uh, let's explore the neighborhood. You pick your way down the worn, uneven stairs and descend into the hubbub below. Juana men, women and children surround you, all laughing, haggling and quarreling over one another. You notice a few foreign v faces, Valians, Adirans and even a few Rawatayans slipping through the crowd. A heady mixture of frying fish, unwashed bodies, and accumulated refuse, or refuse, sorry, permeates the air. You come across a Roparo man and woman sitting on a rooftop watching the activity below. They're passing a pipe back and forth and, taking, and talking quietly. He gnaws at the end of the pipe nervously. My neighbor disappeared near the Undercroft weeks ago. And she shrugs. Always smugglers and, uh, always smugglers and pirates lurking there. Some of them turn to slaving. He nods, taking a puff. Uh, that's for what I stay away for, from Delver's Row. Plenty of bad sorts there. And she holds her hand out for the pipe. Kara, she says. But they are the only sorts who pay. They lapse into silence, smoking peacefully. Let's continue. 
You come across a corner where a pair of thugs, a man and a woman, have surrounded a Juana man. He has a pot belly of, uh, and, a, and a nervous expression, and he's backed himself as far into the corner as he can. The thugs advance. It's an exchange. You pay us, and we don't hurt you. Oh. Mm, I don't like the sound of this exchanged wolfing. This isn't worth it. How much are you really going to make off of a few poor Roparu? The thugs consider your words a nod. She's right. Let's let that. There's no thing there, but they are talking. Let's head to the surface. Plenty of money floating about uh, around the bathhouse. The Hoana man thanks you and nervously scurries off. Okay. You pass a uh, busy stall where a man serves murk brew in chipped shell shells. A rich nutty aroma rises in, of, on plumes of steam. You hear a gasp of surprise behind you and see a small group of people huddled together, chattering. An er elderly man... I, I think I selected listening uh, rather than continue exploring. An elderly man shakes his head. Any with eyes can see they do not build ports for our sake, yet the queen allowed their fort in the city. The woman next to him clucks. Ekera, the palace is so high even her head is in the clouds. Another man shrugs. Uh, at least the Rawatayans will drive the other foreigners away. They make too much trouble for other tribes, and then they flee and crowd us here. The other murmur. The others murmur in agreement. Before you can hear more, the teeming masses sweep you further down the street. You come across a Rapiro man and a woman sitting on a rooftop. Oh, okay. Let's return to the Danros then. Uh, can I try it again? Hmm. You find yourself in the middle of a shop-lined street, packed shoulder to shoulder with the people around you. You can barely move. But you know how pickpockets operate. You keep your hands over your valuables. A, a passerby brushes against you. You feel a hand reach for your purse. You grab its wrist and pull the thieves towards you. Before you is a Juana child. Her eyes are wide with terror. Uh, let's intimidate the child. You push her down in the street, calling her a thief and a scamp. You warn her not to come near you again. A small crowd looks on. They whisper to one another, looking at the child and shaking their heads. You're not the first person to encounter this young thief. The child finally gets to her feet and scrabbles off, wiping tears from her eyes. Okay, I actually thought the look of terror was going to be a uh, an intimidation tactic. But apparently I just scared a child that probably is being exploited by their parents or something. I don't know. Or... Even worse, maybe there's, there's uh, in places like this, there's bound to be like groups of, like she might have been an urchin or someone like that, and there's someone that is getting the money that she's stealing. The child disappears around the corner. Okay, let's continue exploring again. You come across a Rapiro man again with this. Uh, wind blows sweet for you. Oh, it's different. Huh? Found half a salvering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think this is just, I think this is just uh, random things. Uh, let's go forward, and then go to the right. You make yourself forward, filling the walls. That's the yeah. Let's retrace my steps to the exit, back to the narrows. The narrows here being, I suppose, the just the narrow corridors. But I think we're at the bottom. Getting to the Elvis Row is the worst thing. It's oh, there's a passage over here. There's also the end of the episode. Just noticed. So for right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Pillars of Eternity Two. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later, but above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.